This is likely my weirdest shopping list for a server project ever. Today's video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Since the dawn of time, wallets have been two things, leather and bulky. Ridge Wallet's space-saving design is not only easier to carry around, it keeps your money safe with RFID blocking built in. The Ridge expands to hold up to 12 cards, is available with either a money clip or cash strap, and best of all, comes with a lifetime warranty should anything ever go wrong. Available in aluminum, titanium, or carbon fiber, and in a variety of different finishes, there's a Ridge Wallet out there to match your style. Visit ridge.com craft to check out the Ridge Wallet for yourself and receive 10% off your order. That's ridge.com craft. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And I know my server rack has been turning out pretty awesome so far, but it's about to get a whole lot cooler. And I don't mean that in the figurative sense, I mean it very much in the literal sense, as today's project is going to be installing a rack mount air conditioning unit into the rack to keep all of my servers nice and cold. So yes, all the piping and ducting that I bought is actually for my server rack, but what exactly are we putting inside of it? Well, that'd be whatever is in these two boxes right behind me. Inside of these two boxes right here is pretty much everything that I need to air condition my server rack, starting right down here at the bottom with the Triplite SR Cool 7K RM. So here is the brains of the outfit. This is the Triplite SR Cool 7K RM, and this was graciously sent over by Triplite for this project. So huge shout out to you guys for making this whole thing possible. It sits inside of an 8U rack mountable enclosure, and it is purpose built for cooling down server racks just like this. In fact, this unit is absolutely perfect for my use case, as this is capable of displacing about 2000 watts worth of heat, and my server rack when at idle is only sitting at about 550 watts. So this should be more than adequate to keep everything inside the rack nice and cold. Now, as I am setting up inside of a garage, it'd be pretty silly just to pump that heat right back out into the space. So this is a ducting kit to take all of the hot air exhaust from the air conditioner blow it out the top of the rack. Now, the reason I had to go buy a bunch of HVAC ducting is we're actually gonna take that exhaust and we're gonna dump it out the back of the house so we don't heat up my garage too much with all the excess heat we'll be generating. And in fact, I'm even going to go one step further and I'm gonna take all of the hot air exhaust from the back of the servers themselves and also blow that out the back of the house. So none of the heat that is generated inside of this box will make it back out into my garage. So now you know why I really needed those side panels to be installed in the previous video, as we're gonna be dumping all of the heat from the server rack out of the back of the house. I'm also going to be sealing up the majority of the mesh on the front and rear of this rack with a very thick vinyl sheeting. It's still clear, so I should be able to see into the rack just fine, but it will also keep the cold air where it should be right in front of the servers. The top panel is also going to be sealed off, and for that I'm going to be using a very large magnetic sheet and then cutting the holes for the ducting and cable runs that need to get in and out of the rack. Now, my original plan for this project was to install the rack mount air conditioner right up here at the top and blow the air down the front. However, after reading the instruction manual, they do recommend installing on the very bottom of the rack and blowing the air up. So that is the route that I'm going to be taking. As such, I'm gonna do a little bit of rearranging inside of the rack, and then we will get the rack mount AC mounted to the very bottom. So let's go ahead and get started.
right, so that took a lot longer than I thought it would. It's been about four hours since I started this project, uh, mainly because I had to move every single component in this rack because of just random fitment issues. Like if I want my console to open, I can't have a 4U server right above it because the handles will hit the top of the screen. Uh, I had to move my switches multiple times to figure out the spacing on those and where I'm gonna put a patch panel. Um, my file server was 1U off of where it needed to be, so was my Dell server. Uh, just a lot of random issues that took me a little while to work my way through. But phase one is now complete. I know you can't see it, but the air conditioner is installed right here at my feet. Trust me. Uh, I've also installed a whole bunch of these Star Trek 1U blank panels, and that is simply to help control airflow. I want all of the cold air from the air conditioner coming up in front of the servers, and the only way for it to get to the back of the rack is by going through one of the servers. And that's gonna bring me to a stopping point today. But don't worry, this is not the end of the video, so keep watching. Trust me, it gets a little bit better. Uh, I'm just waiting on a couple of parts to arrive from Amazon, mainly the vinyl sheeting for the front and back panels, as well as a couple odds and ends for the HVAC install. So uh, as soon as those arrive, we'll dig right back into this, and hopefully we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Welcome to the hot side of the rack, and unfortunately it's about 85 degrees outside, so the hot side is putting it a little bit mildly. It's warm back here. Let's show you what we got going so far. So I don't know if this will show up on camera, but there is the rear of the air conditioning unit. Now, this thing definitely needs the ventilation kit installed if you plan on using one of these, as I tried running it uh, without the ventilation kit, and well, let's just say it didn't go well. It heated up the server above it quite significantly. So the plan for right now is we are going to install the ventilation kit. We're gonna actually size it down from six inches down to four inches because that'll fit a little bit better in my server rack. We're gonna run a pipe up the left side right here, all the way up to the top, and we're gonna vent it right out the top there. Now I've also done a little bit of work off camera and there's another duct that runs right here and that actually has a chimney coming out the top of it. What we're gonna do is this is going to suck the hot air out of the back of the rack and then the air conditioning is gonna go out the top right here. It's gonna tie into that with a T and then both of them are going to shoot out the back of the house. Everybody got that? Good, let's get to work. And now we need to find out what comes in the ventilation kit. So we've got a couple different lengths of uh, six inch flexible hosing. We've got a short one and a long one. Uh, we have a piece, so if you were venting this into a drop ceiling, this is actually what you would use to connect to a drop ceiling or a window. If you're just gonna dump the hot air directly out of the back of your server rack, this is kind of a cool piece. This is a magnetic collar that will you know, attach to the back of your server rack and then allow you to duct the hose straight out of it. And then this is the piece I'm most concerned with. This is the actual vent adapter. So this will actually hook onto the back of the air conditioning unit and give you an outlet hose. What I love most about being a YouTuber, it's not the money. It's not the access to hardware that I have. It's definitely the glamour of it all. You know, ironically enough, I became an IT manager so I wouldn't have to crawl on my hands and knees in data centers anymore. And then I quit my job as an IT manager so I can crawl on my hands and knees in my garage working on my own server. Dang it. He just witnessed a miracle. I found the screw that I dropped. Right? All right, there's that part. order of business is actually to put this uh, very long piece of ducting right into place. Now there's a number of different ways that I can mount this and I think I'm gonna go with the jankiest of the bunch. Oh yeah, we're gonna zip tie it. That actually works pretty darn well. All right, you go ahead and tell me if you've ever seen a better implementation of tweezers in your life. Sorry, zip ties. And I've got myself some uh, semi-rigid tubing here. The ladies.
The ducting is now finally installed. Let me walk you through what we've got going on here. So we start here at the bottom of the server rack with the air conditioning unit right there. We go into a six to four reducer. We cut into an elbow piece, a little bit of semi-rigid tubing, go into a solid five foot section of ducting. We then go back to a semi-rigid up into the upper section. Now, before it meets the upper section, there's also an intake for that right there. This will be exhausting all of the hot air out of the server rack along with the HVAC going up. Now, you might ask yourself, well, if the HVAC is just blowing up this tube, isn't it going to come back down that pipe? You're absolutely right, and I've already thought of that. I got myself one of these, which is an inline blower. So this will actually force all of the hot air out of the server rack and out of the back of the house, hopefully fixing the cooling issue inside of my rack. Now that the ducting is all taken care of, I can move on to the front panel. Now, if you remember right, the cold air is going to blow up from the front of the rack and the servers will only be able to draw on that cold air. So I need to cover up this mesh panel with something. Now, included in the box are these magnetic panels and they work just like that. So you can block off the front of an open rack case. But in my opinion, that doesn't look all that great. So I have a solution so I can still see all of the pretty lights blinking inside of my rack while still providing a plenum space in the front. And that is going to be taken care of with this stuff right here. Remember your grandma's carpets growing up that had uh, vinyl over the top of them? Yeah, I bought a couple of rolls of that. So we're going to cover the front of the mesh panel here in 1.5 mil vinyl. So hopefully I'm going to do this in a way that number one looks pretty good and number two is removable. So during the winter months, I don't have to rely on the air conditioner to keep the servers cool. I can just open up the front and the back of the rack again and let natural air do its thing. All right, so I got my first piece of vinyl cut right here and that went pretty smoothly. So now it's time to actually mount it to the front panel. And for that, I'm just gonna use some uh, screws and a couple of washers to sandwich it between the mesh and the door. So something like that. Uh, let's see if it works. Welcome to day three of this project. And unfortunately, I've hit a little bit of a stopping point and this video is going to extend into a part two. And for that, I am deeply sorry. But let's show you what we got done so far. Starting right up front here with the mesh panel and more specifically with the vinyl backer on it. And I have to say, I'm really happy with the way this turned out overall. The screws that I used are doing an excellent job of holding the vinyl very, very tight against the mesh panel and providing that plenum space that I wanted them to. What's even better is I can still see straight through it, and there's only a little bit of reflection, and I will say the reflection isn't nearly as bad in person as it is showing up on camera. That vinyl panel goes most of the way down the server rack, but as you can see, I did leave the bottom open, so the intake on the air conditioner was still going to draw air directly from the garage. And then right here is where we start the plenum space, right where the blower is on the air conditioning unit. Speaking of, let's take a little bit closer look at the SR Cool 7K RM. Now, if you're familiar with portable air conditioners, this works in very much the same way. Uh, there's a power button right here to turn the whole unit on. There's a temperature control right here at the top, as well as a three speed fan adjustment. There's a preset quiet mode right here and a timer to run the air conditioner for a specific amount of time. There's also a function button right here, which changes it between cooling mode and dehumidification mode. I really like the option of having both an air conditioner and a dehumidifier in the rack, as the cooling works great during the summer, but if the ambient temperature drops below around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, condensation becomes a major concern. Having that dehumidifier allows me to still run the blower in a closed environment, but not have the risk of condensation and dew collecting on the servers. And moving on here to the back side of the rack, where you can see my excellent ducting work with that six to four reducer, a little bit of an elbow into the flexible pipe, going all the way up this five foot pipe and up and out the top of the rack. Now, the reason I'm at a stopping point is specifically this right here. Remember how I said I had an exhaust fan to help accelerate that air and get it out of the rack? Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't moving nearly enough air, so I needed to order a higher capacity blower. So this puny guy is going back to the store as it only moves around 80 cubic feet per minute. And again, that just wasn't nearly enough to keep up with the back pressure generated by the air conditioning. Hopefully arriving sometime tomorrow, I have a 190 CFM blower that should do a more than adequate job of moving all that hot air out of the rack and out of the house. As an added bonus, this new blower also mounts directly to the ceiling and will help support the ducting on its way out of the house, giving me a much cleaner look overall. So unfortunately, this is where I'm gonna have to leave you for today, but fear not. In the very next video, we are going to go through a full set of temperature testing to see if the air conditioner actually makes a difference inside of my rack. 
In fact, I spent a couple hours last night running and configuring all these thermal probes all around my rack to get ambient temperature from the room as well as blower temperature inside the plenum space. I've also set up monitors for the majority of the servers as far as CPUs go to see if the temperatures actually drop both outside the rack and inside the servers. Hopefully that video will be coming to you later this week. In the meantime, if you liked this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on here and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.